Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Pretty much every day. And uh, we got our first big tech warning yesterday from Apple, Apple Computer, uh, of supply chain disruptions. I think we're going to get a thousand more, um, maybe only 700 more. Um, it's going to be the biggest theme the rest of the year. I've got so many opinions, I, I don't even know where to start, Chris. Um, let me start by saying my antenna are up. And my suspicions are strong. I just cannot believe, I will not, I, I just, doesn't register with me that this is a natural event. Um, Fulford mentioned that in a conversation with the Langley, I got the impression it was a mid-level guy. He was almost boasting that the design was to hit yellow race men, the Asian, um, the Asian race, and men twice as much vulnerable as women. Um, and he said the white man doesn't have any vulnerability at all. Um, there have been no deaths from white men. And if we don't hear that on the news, then my antenna will have gathered in some information that I had suspicions for. If they don't tell us that white people aren't vulnerable and have not been harmed, we might get sick, but we're not going to have the, the quick death. Um, I had something pretty horrible back in May and June of 2017. It was the worst bronchitis I've ever had. I had pulled muscles in my, my rib cage in the back. Um, I, I was hoarse. I, you know, coughed three or 400 times a day for a few weeks. Uh, that was the worst I ever had. And a friend of mine said, Jim, maybe you got something laced. Maybe it was in your iced tea. Maybe, maybe who, who knows? Maybe somebody sprayed you while you were on an, an escalator. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But my antenna are up. And, uh, I got a few Chinese contacts, Hattrick Letter subscribers. One's in Singapore, a couple in Hong Kong. Uh, one, a gringo, I mean, an American guy, wrote me a message and said, I am in Wuhan, and I'm stuck here. What are your suggestions? And I had nothing really great to say. I, I mean, what, what am I going to say? Well, I've got a magic wand, and I can work it on you. No, I, I don't know. I told him, you know, do do what the smartest thing you can. Clorox on all the things you touch. Um, low micron mask. Uh, change it frequently. And, uh, you know, be careful in the conversations that you're in with other people because I'm convinced it's not from breathing that viruses are passed. It's from talking. Uh, every once in a while, <laughs> this is funny, like yesterday, I cleaned this on my cell phone. Why? Because I had a little spit all over it from the last few days. I clean it every few days, and I realized that's how we transmit. We talk to somebody, we spit right in their face. But it's at the micron level. Or it's at the, you know, large micron level. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a conversation with a friend over lunch, and I have to wipe a piece of ham off his, off his arm that I spray. Okay, we spray when we talk. We got saliva in our mouths. We try to make sure that we have saliva in our throats so we don't get dry and hoarse so we can talk right, which is a guarantee we spray when we talk. I clean my, my, my panel 
my front screen. I clean it all the time, like once a month. <coughs> There's another one, coughing. Okay, this is how we transmit disease. And, um, you know, what's going to spread more than the virus is going to be the interruption to the supply chain. Um, it's going to be brutal. And that's another reason I believe it might be part of a plan. But, you know, we can't prove anything. <clears throat> you can, you know, you can trot out a couple of Rothschild types <coughs> and they'll lie. So you never know what you get. Um, but this just looks way too convenient. <clears throat> you may not be aware, Chris, but uh, the full year 2019 Belt and Road paid projects was $1.34 trillion which is the threat. That's, that's critical mass. It's not like, well, it's 200 billion. It's never going to go anywhere. No, no, it, it was 600 something <clears throat> the first half. And then it was 1.34. So it's 730 or so the second half of 2019 part. I got something. <coughs> <clears throat> and um, to me, that's some motive. <coughs> I look for a potential motive in order to put some pieces together. I'm, I'm kind of a data forensic analyst. <clears throat> I put a, an opinion, I slam it on the wall, and I say, okay, what's negative to dismiss this theory, opinion? What's positive to confirm it in little ways? After a few weeks, what do we have? Well. With the coronavirus, we've got about 28 things that are in support of nasty shit and maybe one or two that don't support it. So I'm, I'm at like 28 to 2 and still gathering info. Um, <clears throat> what's not in the news, even for people who like to talk about uh, the unusual angles, is that the Chinese Communist Party is under fire. Uh, they're doing their dead level, dead level best to make it sound like uh, it's not that bad. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's rather contained. And it's pretty much just in Wuhan. Um, did you know that a couple of years ago there was a, um, there was a bioweapon story told about the Wuhan 100? I mean, why does Bill Gates have lots of vaccines ready to sell? He said, I got millions of vaccines waiting. Gosh, did that not incriminate himself? Okay, that's one of the 28 items. The fact that, that Langley claims that white men are not vulnerable, white women are not vulnerable, the, the Caucasians are not vulnerable. And furthermore, blacks are only one-tenth as vulnerable. And Indo-Europeans, just think of... The, the non-white, like Turks, Indians, Pakistanis, they're not white, they're not Asian yellow. I don't even know what the official name of the yellow race is. I, white is Caucasian, but <clears throat> is it called the Asian race? I, I don't really know. Uh, weird question, but the fact that only one-tenth of vulnerability for blacks and Indo-Europeans, okay, um, but they got maybe a different plan called locusts uh, for Africans to starve them to death. Um, so, you know, there's just way too many negatives to support a theory of foul play and a plan. I have one really smart client. So when I get a message from him, I read it. And he said, Jim, it's going to sound weird, but, you know, the Chinese have been stealing our stuff for a long time. Um, Clinton opened the doors at Sandia Labs. You remember that in 95? You might have been a little bit young. Um, were you in diapers then? Just kidding. Um, I was, uh, <laughs> I was 95. I was, I was 40 something years old. I was um, in high school in 1995. Okay. So Sandia Labs was a case where Clinton opened the doors and sold schematics for weapon systems and the money went to the Clinton Foundation. This guy's one of the biggest traders ever to occupy the White House. Um, he, he, gosh, he, he was lucky not to be hanged. But instead, Papa Bush and Clinton arranged to shoot down eight 
generals and, a, and an admiral over Alabama in 1995, uh, following that with the Oklahoma City bombing to complete the threat, and then they started firing generals. Clinton started the firing of generals. The Clinton movement was basically the loyalists to the crime syndicate, narcotics group, versus the constitutionalists. Because, you know, fascists don't have any time for constitution. Come on. This is all about crime. It's about, you know, men and deeds. Come on. Get with it. Okay, so Clinton fired a whole bunch, and I actually met one at a swimming pool in Clearwater, Florida. He said, I, I'm a, I got dismissed. I was a general. I can't talk much. But I got a bunch of friends who could if they were here. Following that, baby Bush fired a bunch. Okay, it's, it's not very well known, but take a guess how many generals there are in the U.S. military. Generals and admirals. Take a guess. I imagine there's hundreds. 2,000. So there are about 500 dismissed generals and admirals from the combined administrations, 24 years, of uh, Clinton, baby Bush, and Obama. Um, so that's a lot of generals hanging around. None of them were executed. They were fired. So what do they do? They go fishing? Well, some do, but they organize something called America First. And their headquarters was in Idaho. They had an annual, you know, what do you call it, a roundup, a uh, festival, or whatever. But they had an annual conference. It was like Davos, but it was in Idaho for America First generals. They're all dismissed. They didn't go away. So what was their project for the last 10 years? Recruit a president. Who'd they pick? Trump. What did Trump talk about in his inauguration speech? America first. Yeah. When he did, I thought, oh, there's your confirmation. He was handpicked. He was recruited. It's not a decision where he thought, I think I'll run for president. It might be a good idea. This country needs a leader. No, they knocked on his door and said, we choose you and we will protect you because he originally refused the job. He said, they'll, they'll kill me in two months. Who? The deep state. Okay. The deep state got started in its rooting system in 1988 with Papa Bush. He was a one-term president, but he was really a three-term president because in two months, he had Reagan shot. So Papa Bush was pretty much running things for two Reagan administrations. And Reagan was not exactly a figurehead, but he was a weakened man and bombarded with microwaves too. His Alzheimer's was not a natural outcome. My point is that we had the three different two-termers, that's 24 plus four, that's 28 years, but maybe 36 years of fascist rooting. These all three were narcotics. Well, Papa Bush was a narcotics seller, but the other three were narcotics users. And I love seeing a picture of Bill Clinton sitting next to Donald Trump. They're the same age. Bill Clinton looks like he's got one firm firmly, firmly in the grave. And, uh, Trump looks rather vibrant, but then you could take a look at their wives and wonder very little why they're still the way they are. Bill Clinton had a hag who I call Caligula, and Trump had, was it Ivana or Ivanica? I can't keep them straight. He's got too many uh, Ivans. Anyway, uh, there have been three or four assassination attempts on Trump. And I think that he's been compromised. I know I'm veering off course here, but so be it. Um, when they took over the, the, the attorney Cohen's files and threatened him, you know, give us all your files or we'll charge you with, what, obstruction, for obstruct I'm sorry, obstruction of justice or, or perjury for investigations when you're not charged with anything? Oh, God, that, that's their favorite now. You got nine years in prison for lying to investigators but you weren't charged with anything. It was just an investigation and you got perjury. Okay, so perjury is an easy thing now. It's, it's now the garden variety slam they put on people they don't like. Bring them in for investigation, we'll prove a lie here or there or everywhere. Doesn't matter, we'll make shit up. 
and put him in prison for nine years. Anyway, it's so sickening what's going on with our country. Um, back to uh, the virus. I've got a neat, I shouldn't use the word neat because that sounds like fun, a very intriguing fact that I believe is true and it, it bears further confirmation. China is the only country in the world that ordered SARS vaccines across vaccination across the entire nation. Now I'm not, I don't have all my viruses that we fabricate for weapons. I don't have it all clear, but I believe the swine flu and SARS are pretty much the same thing. I'm not sure about that. S-A-R-S. -S. Anyway, I'll just call it SARS. It is what it is. And I think it's swine flu, but I might be wrong. And I'm, you know, when I'm wrong, it's funny. I get contact us emails trying to help me out, not calling me an idiot, but saying, you know, you might want to, you know, integrate this into your extensive memory banks. Um, I've been told by other informed people that this coronavirus was designed for those who had the SARS vaccine. The SARS vaccine apparently created some receptors that weren't there, that aren't there for white people. Remember, remember, there was a lot of vaccination, but it was pretty much voluntary and suggestions and warnings and fear, fear factors. But China engaged in, from what I understand, several hundred million vaccinations. And you gotta wonder if Bill Gates was a profiteer in that. This guy is a piece of shit. And if he falls down a stair, this is one of my favorite sayings about Kissinger. You know, he's a little bit uh, unsteady. If he falls down a staircase and break his neck, I might throw a party. Um, I have the same impression about Bill Gates, who's not looking very good these days. He's not a whole lot older than I am, but golly, he looks about 80 years old and, and, and frail. Um, Okay, so he bought himself a Porsche and didn't buy a Tesla. Why is the Tesla stock doing so great? Golly, they don't have much of any profit. They're in debt up to their ears. They're about to go bankrupt, but their stock's going well. I actually do have an answer for that one. <laughs> go ahead. Because I was, we were doing a call about that a couple weeks ago. I happened to notice it started going vertical right at the exact same time the Fed started pumping their repo lines. So if anyone wants the effects of printed money, I was shocked when I noticed that that's exactly when it started happening. Well, I've got a little theory. Call, it, call me wacko, but I'm just going to put it on the table because I'm not going to exactly put it on the wall. I'm going to put it low on the wall so when it falls, it won't fall hard. But I've got this theory that before long, Tesla's going to be announcing that they've got asteroid mining rights. <laughs> Maybe that's the plan to cover the COMEX contracts. We're going to mine for gold and silver on asteroids. Could, could be, could be. And, and don't leave out the rare earths. <laughs> uh, China did something with this latest pork and beans travesty of a trade deal. Uh, nothing that China's obliged to buy is really obligatory. And they get to dump a trillion dollars worth, I don't know, several hundred billion dollars worth of toxic bonds that we'll repackage with CLOs and call it AAA and sell it to our pension funds, mutual funds, and insurance funds. That's, that's nice. Good work, Trump. You did, you done good. Yeah. Um, but the Chinese did something else. They said, we're going to dump a whole lot of your treasury bonds unless you give us the raw ore from your not too extensive, but significant rare earth mining, rare earth metal mining. Oh. And we'll sell you back the finished refined 12 elements like nobid nobidium. Um, I think tantalum is another one. You know, you know the Colton, Colton, C-O-L-T-A-N, the Colton mines of uh, Venezuela and Brazil. Okay, we lust for them. It's got tantalum in it and tantalum is a significant uh, metal for cell phone technology. Okay. I, I don't have all my facts down, but uh, coltan is sometimes called blue gold. Uh, it's going to be a strategic metal. Wars will be fought over coltan. We'll make up shit. It's what we do well. And then we'll <laughs> invade. 
oh, Venezuela is a terrorist nation. Well, you know, it already has been, but now Russia's there running their their uh, their oil industry, their, their state oil industry. Russia's running it. Rosneft is running it. They got lots of Venezuelan workers, but they're not running it because Chavez packed the Venezuelan oil executive ranks with non-engineers who were more adept at stealing than they were at maintenance and ex exploration and delivery. So that's one reason Venezuela is in, in the shitter now, because Chavez wrecked it. I don't like Chavez. I don't like Maduro, but I don't like invading their country. I, I would encourage them to clean up their act, you know, get some external help. And if it means Rosneft runs it, then Rosneft runs it. Okay. Um, Back Real quick on uh, Venezuela, any any thoughts about what happened with their gold last year where that seemed, you know, we, we hear the, the, the sanctions yeah. blocking their gold and somehow Citibank and Deutsche Bank end up with most of it? We stole it. I mean, these are not complicated stories. Um, they had it stored in London and it got distributed. Caracas and the Maduro regime said, we want it back. And they said, no. And the International Court of The Hague didn't do anything. Uh, I believe it was 30 tons, 29, 31, something like that, 30 tons. Uh, we're talking about a lot of money. And the London bankers have the right to steal gold. They have the right. If they consider the regime to be unstable or a terrorist um, or maybe appealing to the wrong side of the aisle politically in some way, according to the uber lords of London, then they can steal it. Yeah. I remember the Libyan gold, which is a completely different story. I remember... This was a while back. It was a good seven or eight years ago. A London official came out and said, we have the following 15 requirements for Libya to satisfy for the return of their 144 tons of gold. Oh, really? How about a signature? <clears throat> no, they've got 15 political requirements. Never satisfied. And now... Libya is pretty much a failed state. And uh, from what I hear, Russia is trying to put it back together again. You know, I, I got a weird email a couple of days ago from a follower. I don't think he was a client. All he said was, I, I follow your, your interviews often. He, he didn't say I'm a subscriber for the last X years. And he said to me, um, you seem to put China on a pedestal that they do really well and that they're an honorable player and uh, uh, they're worthy of great respect. Uh, could you please justify your admiration and respect for China? And I thought about it for half the day before I responded. It was, you know, it was working its way around. I was ruminating. I wasn't taking notes. I was just thinking. And I finally came up with a good answer. Uh, the voice taught me a lot about China. He said, I've had nothing but good experiences with, with them. They're always honest brokers. They're always honest clients. They always pay their bills. They always show respect. They introduce me to good people. And I've never had a bad experience with the Chinese or a reference. I can't say the same about Switzerland. Okay, so what's he saying? That they're good, they're honorable in commerce. And then you look at uh, their deals in Africa. They build a railroad, they build a port facility, they lend money to Angola, they get paid back in RMB for oil sales. It's a win win situation. China is pretty effective at win wins. And then the US has the effing gall to say, that they had a win. 
No, it was a win-win. You forgot the other half of win-win. We look for win-lose, and we criticize win-win because there's a win on the one, on the one side that China enjoys. No, no, I don't buy into that at all. I don't like our win-lose fascist attitude in foreign policy. You could line up a 20 different stories where China has done well by their foreign partners. Right now, they're doing very well with Iran. They're doing very well, and that's new because China kind of stepped to the side with all the sanctions. They didn't want, didn't want to get mixed up in it all. because China thought that some of their assets would get frozen. China has done very well in Pakistan. China has done very well in Djibouti. China has done very well with a lot of countries, many of them in Africa. They've done well in Venezuela, covering some of their debt. They've done well with Saudi Arabia. They've, they've never raped Saudi Arabia. We have. We gave them a false flag attack just in August. You know, we came up with a Mickey Mouse story. It got dismissed. Who were the primary agents for dismissing our Mickey Mouse story? It was the Saudis. And how did they do it? Well, their department of, of well, their foreign minister had tables and tables of missile parts showing Czechoslovakian markings. We screw over. The U.S. screws over our allies. We lost at the battle with uh, the Nord Stream and the Germans. We're going to lose at the battle with France, England, and Germany over Huawei. Um, I just wrote a paragraph before we, we started talking. Uh, it, it was how Russia has the S-400 missiles for defense. I, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for bouncing around because we don't have a plan and we just agreed that we'll, we'll speak extemporaneously. And this is where, <laughs> this is where my, my mind is moving. So I think it's still pretty interesting, although it's not cohesive. Uh, I'm not a rambling kind of guy. I'm very organized, especially with my reports into five or six very distinct chapters. But, you know, if you're looking at change agents for the next chapter, and some call it the global financial reset. It's a very often used term without an explanation. When we had the global financial crisis, okay, that's really the, the layman crisis and everything that happened in a big shit storm after that. Yeah. But the global currency reset is not a very well-known concept. It's, well, it's the other side of the dollar. Well, how do you retire the dollar? Good question. What are the two main advantages for Russia and China? Or you could say Russian oil, to be sure. Russian mineral resources, oh, to be sure. They're number one, two, or three in every single metal. Maybe not in some of the rare earth metals, but I, I don't really know about that. Uh, China's got a, a big lock on, on at least production. But Russia brought forth the S-400 missile, and they make it available for purchase. But what they don't talk about much is their S-500 and their S-600, which protects Russia. They're supersonic. They're like 10 times the speed of sound. There is no protection from them. And we don't have one, nor do we have protection. So the Russians are telling us, back off. We're going to have gradual steps where we undo your fascist policy and rooting system. So Russia brings to the table the S-400 system, which I think has virtually eliminated the U.S. military component for protecting the dollar. China brings to the table big manufacturing capacity, like 22% of the global manufacturing capacity. Just think of all the supply chain intermediate stuff. Include pharmaceuticals in that, people, because uh, you're going to be hearing about that. You're going to be hearing about shortages in certain medications because they can't get the Chinese component, the building blocks for huge molecules. It's, China has made a big move into that in the last 15 years, and they've been successful. China brings to the table something unique, though, and that's Huawei. They've pretty much learned and concluded that Huawei can help change the world in terms of you know, think of it like the Stratego game. 
the, the Stratego game of, of lining up all the nations. And I, I don't line them up as, uh, you know, West versus East. I will line them up as West, East, and Frontier. Uh, there are some nations that have one leg on each side. Uh, Germany is now proving to be a frontier nation. Saudi is a frontier nation. Uh, Iran has really good connections with a lot of frontier nations, but it's really an East nation. Okay, so with the Russian S-400 missile defense and the Chinese Huawei telecom, in addition to all the oil and minerals that Russia has and the potential for manufacturing that China has, they're going to change the global map and the Belt and Road is the manifestation of that and for those who aren't aware I, I had questions early last year how much trade is on the Belt and Road is, is much of anything completed in other words is there a toll road or is there a port facility that, that has trade running through that port or is there a railroad that carries freight uh, is there an airport that, that carries passengers what is the trade impact of the Belt and Road projects collectively? Well, it was 610 billion, I believe, the first half of last year, and 1.34 trillion in the full year. That's critical mass. Now, I have one of my little points supporting the construct, the opinion that this was a stage event. One of the supporting facts for attack is that Belt and Road got too big. Now Belt and Road might see a decline in 2020 for a trade and trade payment, just total trade payment, total dollar value of all activity on the Belt and Road projects. I just named several examples in a general sense. <sighs> We're going to see a lot more change come that favors Asia and the Eurasian trade zone because I don't know that Russia is going to be all that affected. Uh, is Russia yellow race? No. In Siberia, yeah. Siberia has both. Okay, this is going to be a little technical. You might find this a little strange, but when I was a senior in high school, Obviously, I took advanced placement calculus. I took advanced placement chemistry, but I took something, <laughs> I thought it would be fun. I'm going to take advanced placement Russian history. Okay. And I thought, you know, I don't want to be a worm. I don't want to be this guy. All he knows how to do is do math puzzles, and he's just really good in calculus and can't zip his fly. You know, I know. I, I was on the soccer team. I was the uh, left half back. I did all the corner kicks. I was the only guy on the team who was ambide ambidextrous. I could kick left about 40 yards. I could kick right about 45 or 50 yards. Yeah. I did all the corner kicks. So to prove, <laughs> to prove even intellectually that I was not a bookworm math, math nerd, I took Russian history. And it's, it's pretty interesting. It's just like wave after wave of the Mongols. And this happened for a thousand years. Okay, if you if you take if you have a you know a small group of of men and there's some Russians in there, you, you can see a little bit of Asian cheekbone and forehead features. It's it's subtle. It's subtle. It's the Mongol. It's the Mongol influence within their genetic strain. They've got a little bit of yellow race. So I'm very curious what's going to happen with the virus for infections and death count within Russia. But you can also always, almost make two arguments. It's Eastern Russia and Siberia that might be the most vulnerable. Putin's got that too. And you just look at his face. It's not like ours. It's a little wider and rounder, you know, not the, the not the Polish, very round face look. I know I'm generalizing, but forgive me. I, I've known some Polish people. I'm just astounded how round their faces are. Um, it, it, it's it's what, what it is. Um, okay, so watch to see how the Eurasian trade zone develops even during this supply chain disruption. I think Germany 
has pretty much had all they're going to tolerate with Washington. It's pretty much FU at this point. Merkel's on her way out. She just had a stunning defeat of her Christian Democrats. And they are telling her, you got to go. Uh, to me, that will bring about some changes with U.S., how do you call it, puppet strings. You know, to move the mouth and to hand the speech, Merkel, a.k.a. Hitler daughter. By the way, there, from what I'm learning, they're either three daughters or they're three cousins. They're all women. Uh, Theresa May of England, Angela Merkel, and there's a woman who has a difficult Slavic name. I think she's from Lithuania. And they're at the boarding school all together. I think that's where Hitler sent them when they were young. And they all were groomed to be leaders hmm. along the banker cabal strain. Kind of like how Bill Clinton is a Rockefeller, and so is Hillary. Boy, that never gets run around in, in the facts uh, grapevine, does it? Why do they not have children? Because they're cousins. <clears throat> I tell you, we got really weird royalty, and I'll just throw in there, uh, Jimmy Carter is the bastard son of Joe Kennedy Sr. Let me just throw that in there. Miss Lillian, the father of Jimmy Carter was well known and interviewed during the Carter administration. And how come the gloves always were off and no news reporter ever asked him, who's your daddy? Miss Lillian, was this an immaculate conception or is there a father in the picture? <clears throat> she was Joe Kennedy Sr.'s secretary. And she had a leave of absence to go have a baby. And it was all kept quiet, even with Joe Kennedy. Okay, you can put Jimmy Carter next to Robert Kennedy and next to Billy Carter. And the two who look more alike are Jimmy Carter and Robert Kennedy. They've got the same teeth. Okay, enough of all.